relationships. Faith-based tips, tricks, and challenges to improve your marriage and change your life. It's the Love Lessons Podcast with your hosts, Christian counselors and marriage experts, Dr. Zach and Blair Gammon. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to today's episode of Love Lessons. Hey. (laughs) Why so sad, Eeyore? You know, they say all good things have to come to an end. And unfortunately, that is the case for Love Lessons as well. The whole show is coming to an end? Okay, well, that's a little dramatic. Oh, um, okay, sorry. The end of season one of Love Lessons. It's here, isn't it? Is it is here. Yeah. This is our final episode of the inaugural season of the Award Aware show, Love Lessons. <laughs> Award Aware. <laughs> we haven't won any yet. We just know they're out there. <laughs> we're not going to win any either. We we're get not. zero stars, Zach, no, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, we're... Um, but we're still going to be aware of them. Yep. Hmm. Yep. That's true. So, so here we are. Yeah. We've we've made it to uh, the end of season one. Mm-hmm. So people have stuck with us. Yeah. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, one could argue we still don't know what we're doing. It's true. Um, but we've had a great time. I don't know if they've had a good time. I've had a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, except for when I've been trying to edit these episodes and the computer doesn't cooperate and. Um, I, I think bad thoughts, but uh, bad <laughs> things as we had early on in yeah. the season. Um, but the podcast has been going for about six months now, and um, it is time to take a seasonal break. A little break break. A little break, break. What are we going to do with all of our extra time? Hmm. I'm feeling like a vacation to the beach. I like that idea. Yeah. A little vacation, a little... Uh, nap. We have children. There's no time for naps. Um, I don't know. We're not going to be sitting and staring at each other trying to determine content for an episode for mm-hmm. a while. No producing. No, no producing. editing. Yeah. 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 What are people going to do without hearing you laugh on this podcast? I guess they're going to have to call me and listen to me laugh on the phone at them. Bless. Hopefully they bless have some funny hearts. stories that get me cackling. Yeah. 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 So we've had some good times. We have. It's been the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some fun stuff planned for season two. Yeah. But we're excited about being able to take a little bit of a break and yeah. focus on family. Yeah. And if you love, love lessons, that love, 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 if you enjoy the show, you can always go back and listen to the episodes again. You can mm-hmm. go uh, watch on YouTube. We've got some, you know, bloopers on YouTube. And so, I mean, the, every episode is like one big blooper, but um you can you can continue mm-hmm. to experience the magic as they say at Disney. <laughs> Except this ain't Disney. Honey. It's not. It's a much more low budget production. Yeah. Now we do um, plan to drop some episodes, some random ones, yeah, here and there as things happen, or we have some insight, or want to stay connected. So yeah. um, subscribe to our Facebook page and to uh, wherever you get your podcast, mm-hmm. YouTube the channel so that you can get an alert when those things drop yeah and then we'll also um kind of like we did for for season one we'll drop a trailer Mm -hmm. two or three weeks out from the the launch of the actual um second season and so you'll get notified so you can be watching for it so yeah it'll be it'll be a good time Mm -hmm. so so this episode is kind of like the last day of school yeah where nothing really gets accomplished but you have a whole lot of fun exactly and um we have some fun stuff planned honestly i don't really know if it's going to be fun for you but we're going to have a great time so um buckle up i guess we have we have i do have um a handful of of things that um from old episodes that never made it in some more cutting room floor stuff that we'll kind of sprinkle in um and Blair and I have um, arrived to record this show with a list of random topics. None of them are going to teach you anything about uh, your relationship. They're just going to show you that we're a little bit off our rockers. So if you are here for educational content, you can go ahead and skip this episode and await season two because there's going to be nothing in this episode that teaches you anything about. There are going to be no lessons of love in this episode. This is why we are award aware. (laughs) 
that's it. So here's one thing we can teach people. Okay. I've got one last fun fact All for right. the season. Hit us with it. All right, here we go. So it turns out that divorce rates are continuing to fall. So if you remember a few episodes ago, I don't remember which one it was because they all kind of run together, but we talked about in one of our fun facts that the state of marriage is better and it's not that you know half of marriages are ending in divorce. Um, and in that study, it talked about how um, that the, the state of marriage within the church, it does not reflect uh, those who are unchurched. Yeah. And so it's all this, this good news. And so this has continued. Uh, good news. So they, the divorce rates are at their lowest rate in nearly five decades. And so as of the last statistics that were released by Focus on the Family, uh, the divorce rate in the U.S. has declined to levels not seen since the uh, early 1980s. And they say that only about 15 marriages out of every 1,000 end in divorce. 15 out of 1,000. It's pretty wow. good odds. And this is a 34% fall from uh, the peak of divorce in the 80s. Wow. So people are sticking with it and mm -hmm. making it work. Fantastic. I wonder if it's because of all the stuff that we've taught them on Love Lessons. I don't think that one season and six months of podcasting to award aware people. They're not award aware. We are award aware. From two award aware people. Oh, okay. Is decreasing the divorce rates that significantly. I have no evidence to the contrary. I mean, I would actually say it's some of the work that's being done at Revive Counseling Center. Maybe and so. marriages there that have a much bigger impact on the divorce rate than mm. a couple of ding-dongs sitting around. Revive is a great sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> Check them out. You should send their executive director a basket. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Of what? Hornets? She likes Godiva, <laughs> Gerber Daisies, Gucci. Send her the G's. Granimals. <laughs> she likes granimals. <laughs> Goldfish. Goldfish. <laughs> Send her three G's. She'll be okay with that. Yeah. You wanna you wanna talk about some stuff? You wanna air some, some dirty laundry and <laughs> and and talk about some unhinged topics. You wanna here? get unhinged? This is what the people have asked for. I should We're have just... taken my bra off for this to oh, be wow. honest. Whoa. To be honest. Whoa. What kind of show are we at? No, not like that. It's love I'm lessons just, after dark here. No, I'm just saying when it gets unhinged, like nobody wants to be constricted when they're trying to get unhinged. I've, I'm going to have to mark this episode explicit now. <laughs> I won't say anything else. I'll be mute the rest <laughs> of the episode. It's just me over here, Brawless. <laughs> <laughs> mute and Brawless. What is happening here? I don't know. I really hope this isn't the first episode that somebody tunes into. <laughs> And it might because sometimes your podcast start at the wrong. Oh if yeah. If you're on Apple, it starts at the wrong. It starts at the the most recent yeah, episode. Bless Lord have your mercy. Heart. Go back and start in the beginning. Yeah, stop oh, where actually, you are. Actually, start like midway through the season because in the beginning we really didn't know what we were doing and you know we had to we had some speed bumps along the way. So. Or maybe they need to listen to this and if they can't get through this, then they know. Like, it's kind of like starting a book that you're not sure about. You know, like. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's really poor plot and character development that we've got here for you, but maybe it just gets better. It's got great dialogue, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does. Yeah, it does. I need to come to you and humbly apologize. Oh yeah, for what? I like these. Wow. Okay. What did I, what did you do? What? Um, how can I bestow you with forgiveness? Thank you. <laughs> Good. The word. I didn't think that was grace. What was it? I mean, it is. What are you, Lord, what do you give us? Um, a few episodes back, I gave you a really hard time for not caring when old people die. Mm. I mean, you know, once they're like 65, you're just ready to just shove them on into the grave, right? <laughs> Whatever. And in conversation with you a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I had a... Um, I wouldn't call it a horrifying realization, maybe a semi-shocking revelation about myself. I, we may not come back for season two after I say this out loud. They may cancel us. What did you do? I don't care when animals die. Like pets? Yeah. Like your own or other yeah, people's? Yeah, anybody's, mine, anybody else's. It's just a dog. 
<laughs> You're not going to be sad when Molly, our dog, dies? I mean, maybe a little, but, like, don't don't ask me to get another dog because you miss those little tippy taps on the floor. I'm mm -mm, sorry, she's gone. Do you even like animals? Mm, some of them. Do you feel empathy? I want to like them a lot more. Uh -huh. You like pictures and you like pets, but you don't want to be their owner. Yeah, I've, and I've actually realized, maybe I said this to you like last night or not before last, I've, I've actually realized I don't think that I like pets as much as I just want to like pets. Mm. Because there are days that although she can be really cute, I'm like, Molly, I need you to go away. She's a lot of work for you. Yeah. I you think I it's don't, the work and the neediness? Yeah, I don't have the emotional capacity to give any more love than I'm already giving. Mm. So do you think it's sad when people's like when people are sad because their animals have died? I mean, kind of like you said, like when grandma dies, it's I'm I'm sorry that you're sad. But they're a dog. We knew this would happen. Right. Their life expectancy is twelve well, years. See, so here's the deal. Like I almost had a couple of people come at me last night at church because mid sermon I decided to interject that I thought that we're recording this on a Thursday even though this will be released on the following Tuesday. Wednesday night, I'm in the middle of a sermon, and I felt the need to interject that I don't think that dogs go to heaven because there's no biblical evidence for it. And the entire room went, <gasps> I'm sorry. I, I don't know what you want from me. I don't, they don't have a soul. I'm just trying to figure out I don't care like, how you got there in your sermon. Was it like a squirrel that you no, chased? No, well, because I was talking about how... Um, the thing that separates us from animals is that we have an eternal soul that's always longing for God. Okay. I just decided that it was appropriate to interject. Um, All dogs don't go to heaven? Dogs don't go to heaven. Sorry. Hmm. Like, I hate it for that you, That whole Molly's, rainbow bridge thing is not really a thing. I mean, it's just stuff we say to make ourselves feel better, but... Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry if your dog has passed. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, people will post on Facebook, like... You know, I'm having to put my, my dog down. They're mm -hmm. they're old or they're ill or whatnot. And, like, I hate that for you, but I am i don't think about it anymore after that. I don't care. What about dogs that don't have places to live? Like, in the Sarah yard, McLaughlin's Sarah. already got them taken care of. I don't care. You see those sad faces and you're not moved? Mm -mm. You're not guilted into going mm -mm. to your local shelter and adopting 17 of them suckers? Mm -mm. No. Don't care. Or when they don't have anything to eat and they're like, we need dog food. Where this dog's going to be put to sleep or euthanasia because it doesn't have anybody to adopt it. Listen, I struggle with those commercials anyway because there are nonprofits out there who give gazillions of dollars in grants to buy stuff like that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, That's like saying people shouldn't starve because there's a lot of food banks out there. I, I didn't say it was right. I'm just saying I don't care. <laughs> okay, that is very valid. <laughs> I don't. farm i just don't <laughs> care oh man i know that i am a heartless jerk what about people that don't have their own children and treat their animals like their absolutely children? absolutely not i feel very strongly about that your pets are not your children <laughs> that is the dumbest nonsense i've ever heard if that offends you don't listen to love lessons anymore don't care that is so stupid <laughs> your pets are not your my fur baby no <laughs> shut up Tell me how you really feel. It's so stupid. Oh, man. Gosh, I hate it. I hate it. So, I mean, I understand there are people who very much love their pet. I'm not saying don't love your pet. Good for you. Just don't need me to love it, too. I feel bad for our little dog. There are days that I would give her away. How can you be such I'm an not, empathetic, know, caring person? I know. I'm not beating her, but there are days no. that I'm like, I don't want to talk to you, like, or look at you or whatnot. And she, Lord have mercy, is the neediest individual I have ever met. She is a very, very needy dog. If you don't pet yeah. her, she'll just sit there and whimper. Like, ah. <laughs> you know what's really funny, too, what? is that she can tell when people aren't dog people. 
and, and she's she so codependent she needs yes. them so our friend Brandy, Brandy and Charlie are, are listeners of the show, and I always get a kick out of whenever they come over to the house mm -hmm. because Brandy's like, okay, good dog. Nice to see you. Stay over there. Mm -hmm. And Molly is like, no, I need you to love me. Mm -hmm. I need you to love me with your whole heart. So she tries harder. Yes. and She is the pursuer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She is the pursuer she every time. Every time. And, like, I don't know how Brandy hasn't punted her across our house at, at this point. Like, <laughs> the Holy Spirit yes. helping her with some self-control. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't get, but do you remember, mm, oh gosh, it's probably been 11 or 12 years ago. We were, I don't think you were, I was watching TV one night and this commercial came on for the Kentuckiana, uh, food bank. And this was not to feed a pet. It was to feed elderly people. Oh, yes. So this was based out of Louisville. I don't know if we were watching like a ball game or a movie or something, but whatever. This commercial came on every single commercial break. And the premise of the commercial is there's this very sweet little old lady, and she goes to get, she opens up her cabinet, and the only thing in there is a single little can of like wet cat food. And these people knew what they were doing. They sure did. And she takes half of it and puts in her cat's little dish and it starts eating and you're like oh she's feeding the little kitty and then she very sadly sits down at the table and puts the other uh, half of it onto a plate and picks up a fork and you can tell she's getting ready to eat it and then it goes she goes to this graphic that says there are seniors in need in your community are you going to be one person who helps them and the first time that I saw this commercial I was like that's really sad <laughs> And my emotional stability just deteriorated every single commercial break because it happened every time. And I don't know what kind of sappy music it was, but like very emotional Zach, like they got, and like after like the seventh time that this commercial comes on, I'm like sobbing, like to the point that I can't even watch whatever it is that we're watching. And by the eighth time that it comes you picked on, up the phone. Yeah, you're like, Zach, just give them money. Like, just stop at this point. <laughs> Will that make you feel better? Yeah, and it did. And this was before the internet. Well, I mean, it wasn't before the internet, but it was before everybody could donate online. Yeah. And so I had to, like, call the 1 800 number. And so I'm, like, <laughs> talking to the person on the other end of the line at, like, 9 o'clock. And I saw it. And, and it was. <sighs> Mind you, like, we didn't have a whole lot of money ourselves then, so this was... <laughs> so you're giving money to her so she doesn't yes. eat wet cat foods because we're going to eat wet right, dog food. Right, <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's funny because, I don't know if you remember, but at one point she was like, <laughs> the lady was like, do you want to set this up as a recurring gift? And I'm like, do you? I looked at you, do you want to set this up as a recurring gift? And you were like, no. <laughs> so I did feel bad in that situation, but still not for the cat. That was for the human that yeah. was eating the cat food. And this this is going to alienate whoever is left that's not listening. But I care less about cats than I do about dogs. In the hierarchy I, of animals? Yeah, I, I, I really don't care about your cat. Really don't care about your cat. Love that for you. But I don't care. You know, we had talked about doing a second season, but I don't think that's feasible no. at this point. Mm -mm. It's uh, With the way that you're putting putting it out there like this i mean i'm alienating everyone at this point love your kids i don't want to babysit them but i love them kids are fun <laughs> that's funny because you're really not a kid person you're Maybe you're, I'm not a you're person, person. i don't think you are you're you're your kid person yes i love my kids very but much. and you can tolerate kids other people's cute. kids but like i like walking through our kids ministry on sunday mornings if i'm not preaching or something and i have the time like i'll go walk back and like pastor zach will say hi and be super fun and then i'm gone after 10 minutes Here's what I'm understanding from the animals and the children situation. very self-aware therapist that's, every that's, good therapist has a therapist yeah we would call them your grand therapist that's right some of you might even have like a great grand therapist yeah yeah whole chain mm -hmm. and so i say all of that to say maybe you need to go to therapy to talk about your attachment disorder maybe i do maybe um maybe i'll call revive counseling center <laughs> see if i can get some some assistance here. Mm -hmm. um, did you know there are therapists out there 
who their entire job is being a therapist to therapist so therapists can talk about how hard it is to be a therapist. Oh, absolutely. I can totally see that. Yeah. Totally see that. I would not want to be that kind of therapist. No. Because I feel like there's never any resolution there. And I'm right. like, like when you come in, I tell people too, like when you come to me for therapy, I'm already looking at how I'm going to kick you out. Like, Yeah, we're looking at like solutions yeah. for your issues, we're not just. beginning with the end in mind. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, very, very true. So if you're just there to um, vent without a plan, I mean, the, and there's time and space for that, yeah. but if that's the case, then. And I think I'm that's, a, not... that's appropriate therapy if that's what you're working on. Like, yeah, I just need absolutely. a place to process, like, this is. Like, I carry emotionally heavy things, mm -hmm. and I need a place to process the fact that this is, this is going to be hard work. But there's a difference between processing and venting. Yeah, that's true. So, I think that's where I, I'm like, eh, okay, we can do this for a little while, but, like, are we progressing? Like, because when you process through things, you're progressing through it. Right. Um, yeah. Listen, some of your grand therapists know about your issues. Yeah. Not by name, because mm -mm. that'd be a HIPAA violation. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for people. It's, for it's, the people. It's just us here. Like, I want to no know. No one else is listening at this point. <laughs> then we might as well <laughs> wrap it up. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there are two schools of people. This is my opinion, and I want to know if people believe You're it's You're mixing true. metaphors. <sighs> schools of thought and groups of people. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, there, there are multiple schools with people in them, but that's not the point. There are also schools of fish. So, okay. It, interestingly people, enough, a group of crows is called a murder. There's that ravens. I think it's crows. Ravens are an unkindness. It's an unkindness But I feel both unkind and murderous sometimes <laughs> recording this podcast. Can I, can I continue? I'm just I'm here to help. There are two groups of people. When it comes to this, two sides of the coin, if you will. Okay. Two sides of the sheet, one might say. If you are, and I'm not asking you because I already know what you do, <laughs> you dang savage. If you are changing your bed sheets, washing your bed sheets, mm -hmm. waiting for them to wash and dry, mm -hmm. but it also happens to be nap time, mm -hmm. do you sleep? On your mattress with no sheets if it's nap time? Or do you not take a nap? We Will you sleep on a mattress with no sheets on it? Or a pillow with no pillowcase? Okay, but there has to be some context to this question. At your own home? Yes. With your own germs? Yes. I don't see the problem here. Listen... We could be going through nuclear fallout, and I will find the opportunity to take a nap. Now, it might be <laughs> plutonium-induced nap, but I will <laughs> find an opportunity true. to take a nap. You are a napper. Yeah. So I was washing sheets a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were in the dryer, and you're like, okay, I'm going to take a nap. And I was like, bro, there's no sheets on the bed. And you were like, and? And I looked at you like you had three heads. Probably two of them grown by the plutonium. <laughs> it's it's the same mattress that we sleep on every single night, and the only difference was a thin sheet that is, what, maybe a 32nd of an inch thick separating me from the mattress. I was just cutting out the middleman. <laughs> like, I just don't like the way mattresses feel. I mean, it is our mattress. No one else has ever slept on it's it. It's a pillow top, fluffy mattress. Like, and now I'm talking about like the texture of it again. No, you need yeah, a sheet. Yeah, it feels like fabric. But you can't wash that. I mean, you can spray and you can I like vacuum dirty. it. It was Saturday and I'd already showered. It's, everybody's always dirty. That's not like there's just different levels of dirt and filth. <laughs> you have skin cells that come off, and you don't exfoliate. So yeah, they were coming off. I don't need to. Look at this face. You're supposed to exfoliate more than just your face. Look at this arm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I just need the people to understand that you're a savage because you're supposed to have sheets. I'm not going to do that case. in a hotel room. That's a little different. Right. That's true. 
I'm not going to go over to your mama's house and do it. Like, it, it's just, it's my bed. I don't. I don't get it. There are more pressing things to be worried about in the world, like starting new handyman businesses. You know, though, I think maybe it's the trauma. I can always point it back to the trauma. You can always find a way to be Listen, dramatic and traumatic. I thought peak adulthood, like I was going to make it as an adult if I had a matching sheet set, sheet and comforter and blanket set. Right. Like I had everything kind of like, you know, picked together and, or you had a blanket on the bed because you didn't have a sheet or whatever. So maybe it's the trauma. Maybe it's like I have to have a whole full set to not feel like I'm reliving my trauma. And I just want to go to sleep. I mean, you take a nap on the couch and you don't use a sheet on that. And people's butts have literally been where your head is. Like, it's like butt was here an hour ago and now your head is here. That's valid. And there are more people that put their butts on their on our couch then they put their butts on our bed. In fact, I think our butts are the only two butts that have ever been on the bed. How many times am I going to say butts? The baby's butt was on the bed. Okay, that's true. I guess our kids have like been on our yeah. bed. Okay, that's valid. That's valid. The dog gets on the couch but does not get on the bed. This is true. This and you true. still take a nap. The dog's butt has been on the couch. This is true. So let's talk about savagery. <sighs> Okay, from that point of view, I can understand. I can, Thank you. I concede. Thank you. I'm not going to do it, but I concede. That's fine. You're, as long as we recognize. I'm, I'm recognizing. Thank you. So I'm not apologizing, but I am recognizing something you've said with my own preposterous thing. Okay. It's kind of like poker, like I'm meeting you there. I don't think that's the right poker term, but like... I see your whatever, and then I raise you. Like, I'm seeing this situation. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go play poker. I'll meet you there. <laughs> what? No. So several episodes back, we talked about how a large percentage of men felt like in a crisis they could confidently land an airplane. Absolutely. And you were like, sure, absolutely. Yeah, no and, and most men are like, oh, yeah, cool, sure. Somehow we, we happened upon this conversation, and I have something that is just as preposterous. I don't think I said that word right. Preposterous? Prepos Pre Hippopotamus? Yep. That's it. It's just as ridiculous yeah. that I'm convinced that I could do. <laughs> that would end up getting me killed. But I'm convinced that I could do it, and you were like, Blair, no. No, that's not it. Share with the class. You want to tell what everybody what it is? You want me to do it? Let me do it. Blair... With indignance, with full confidence, fervor, wholeheartedly, without question, with prejudice, believes that she could fight a bear with her bare hands. Bear with bare hands. I am convinced that I would whoop the crap out of a bear. <laughs> I think this started because I watched like a YouTube video of some dude like fighting a bear to hey, save his dog. Hey bear, no, don't say hi. Don't greet it like it's your friend. You take it out. Run at it. Now listen, guys, please hear me when I say this. <laughs> this. <laughs> Just keep going. I'll catch up. <laughs> this by no means is professional advice. <laughs> No. Okay. So please if, don't. Please do not do this. If you encounter a bear, please do not do this. However, this is what our, I... Our malpractice insurance does mm -hmm. not cover poor advice on love Please lessons. do not take this as advice. Take this as understanding that this is what my brain thinks that it would do. And I'm actually going out of town to the mountains next weekend <laughs> to a place called Big Bear Cabin. Oh, gosh. And it's known sure for your its bear sighting. Is, is good before we do this. But I'm convinced that I could yell at a bear and make it go away. Like, do you think I, you could punch it right in its snout? I'm convinced that I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bear and I could be its mama. And it would be like, yes, ma'am. Like, I have so much inside of me that I'd be like, no, bear. It's like every bit of rage you've ever experienced going to be summoned in that one moment. I think so. It's like that video that came out a year or two ago where they were having a backyard party, barbecue, uh -huh. and a bear 
shows up and this guy like walked the bear out of the gate and the bear kind of like swatted at him but he just like confident was like no bear let's go get out of here bear go and the bear listened to him and i feel like i could be that so let me get this straight i feel so like right now i want to go find a bear to prove this to you (laughs) i'm gonna have to have some friends videotape it if we come across a bear if you come (laughs) across a bear this weekend do not approach it (laughs) Dang, I gotta prove it to you, though. No. I gotta prove to you that I can talk to the, I can take the bear down. What is it going to do for you and for me and for our relationship for you to prove this to me? What does it matter? So you believe me, so you don't think I'm crazy. Honey, if you go talk to the bear <laughs> or fight there. the bear, all bets are off. <laughs> I'm already crazy. Now, here's what I'll tell you that I won't do. Hang on, though. Okay, I'm Hold sorry. On. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, two things. Number one, (laughs) you put helmets and mattresses on top of our children when I told you to be weather aware one time. Because I'm a mama bear. And two, you are deathly afraid of snakes that you can run faster than. Bears have fur and snakes have scales. They have Razor sharp claws. That's how they climb trees. They're and a kill mammal, stuff. and so am I. Like I can take out that, take down that mammal. I also feel like I could take out the bobcat too. Like any large mammal, I do feel like I could get handle. Maybe not a lion. I don't feel very confident about lions or tigers. But bears. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> What's di- tell, educate us about what's different between. A lion and a tiger a versus a bear and a, and a bobcat. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just my brain telling me yes or no, you can or can't do this. And I'm not saying that it's fact based at all, but it's my brain saying, ooh, lion, bad, scary, get you. And bear, like, because mm. I think I've seen videos of bears where they do stand down. And I think that I'm intimidating enough to intimidate a bear to stand down. Whereas lions, no. Like, there's if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. If they're standing down, it's because they've made the decision. I think lions are smart and bears are dumb. And I think that I could be smarter than a bear. <laughs> smarter than the average bear? Oh, my gosh. Listen, I also think it's because I have been compared to a bear in multiple times in my life. This is true. I had someone that I worked with that said that I called me panda blair. Mm-hmm. After a panda bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously not a panda manatee. Do you think you can fight a manatee? I don't even know what that looks like to be able to fight it. You don't know what a manatee looks like? The sea cow? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I'm not in the sea very often. Excuse me. As an aside. I'm not done. Okay, but this will just take a second. This is like real life conversations at our house. This is just basically a rehash yeah. of a conversation we've already had. As an aside. South of where we live, in the land of Bowling Green, Kentucky, their weather sirens out there, they're called COWS. It stands for, like I think, Commonwealth it's something, yep. weather, alert, system. weather system, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the acronym is COWS. And so they had some kind of malfunction. And so I'm scrolling through Facebook earlier today, and with no context, I see <laughs> something from... And then a few posts later, it was like Bowling Green Emergency Management. There is no emergency. The cows are fine. No, they didn't say the cows are fine. There is no emergency. Um, The cows are being handled. (laughs) Handle them, cows. Go off, cows. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sorry. Please proceed. I was just telling people how I was called Panda Blair. Yes, Panda Blair. Tell us how you're Panda Blair. Well, this person said that it was because far away... I looked really cute and cuddly and like you wanted to get to know me, but if you got too close, the closer you got, the closer, the scarier I got, and the more that uh, if you got too close, I'd claw your eyes out. Which I was like, oh, thanks, uh, maybe, I'm not sure. There has not been one person that you've told this to, though, that has disagreed with that. And it was at work? Yeah. In an environment where I was assertive? That's a word. So, 
I can totally see that. But also, like... Everyone in your personal life agrees, too. Yeah. I was also called Blair Bear when I was growing up. So I think it's because I'm I'm also a bear. Are you, like, half bear? I think I'm half, half bear. bear and, <laughs> yeah. And so I could take down bears because I am half bear. They're your kinsmen. Exactly. Now, here's one thing I would not do because mama didn't raise no fool. What's that? I would not touch a mama bear's cubs. Oh, no. I'm smart enough to know that if the cubs are around, the mama's around, and I'm not going to go touch the cubs because I could not take her at that point. She would, like, it, it's kind of like Mario when you, like, eat a mushroom. Is it a mushroom when you grow bigger? Yeah, I, think I don't so. remember, but, no. you know, bigger and smaller, yeah. like, they level up when it comes to their yeah. babies. And so I'm not trying to die by a mama bear. So, are you actively looking for bears to fight, or are you just waiting for one to find you, and then you're going to fight it? Like, <clears throat> like, where's the opportunity for bear fighting happening? Are you looking for a fight? No, no, not necessarily. But if one comes up and it tries to fight me, I'm not backing down. I'm not going to go, uh, hey, bear, hey, bear. I'm going to be like, hey, bear, <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Who are you looking at me like that for? Like, who do you think you are? Like... Don't cock your head sideways at me. You need to go back home. Go back to your little bear cave. It's time to hibernate, boo. Like, Let me tell you about my wife, who's fighting bears. A few years ago, almost four years ago now, we went on vacation to Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Beautiful place. Highly recommend Love it. Love Hilton Head. It's Except wonderful. Except for... What we didn't know before we got there. So in Hilton Head, you can't, there aren't any condos on the beach. They, they don't allow any commercialization if you're not familiar with Hilton Head, which is one of the reasons why I really like it. It's not party central. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, nobody's out there going all wild and crazy. It's a lot of families and stuff. A lot and of so, vegetation. Yeah, it's, beautification. it's beautiful. And all of the resorts and the, the hotels and the condos and everything are off the beach. And so you have no choice but to walk. To the ocean. That's not some people's jam. That's cool. Don't go to Hilton Head. Point is, what we didn't know when we got there, we knew we would have to walk to the beach. What we didn't know when we got there is that you have to walk through a lot of wooded area. Where from, we stayed Where at we least. stayed at least. To get from the condo to the beach. And there are signs posted. Because this isn't a short trip. It's not like walking 25 feet. You're probably walking the length of a football field. It was woods, guys. It was a yeah. little path through some woods. Yes. It was, there was, it was like a, a boardwalk type of thing. It was it, it, One part of it, but okay. the rest of it there was not. Anyway, there are signs posted on this path that said, watch out for venomous snakes or poisonous snakes, whichever one can hurt you. Venomous, one of them can and one of them. Anyway. It was the bad kind. The kind that can eat you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what. Had my parents not been with us on this vacation, you would have probably packed up the family and left. Or we'd have stayed in the condo the whole time, yeah. Blair walking through this path. I personally had a great time with it because my dad and I kept, like, scaring the crap out of you. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And you would scream every time. Like, your blood pressure had to have been, like, 250 over, like, mm -hmm. 180. And then I was trying not to, but I didn't do a great job of not scaring the girls where they were worried about snakes. Right. So then we were stomping as we were walking through to try to scare them off. Right. Which the sign recommended, I think. At one point it said, like, or maybe my dad recommended it. Yeah, there, that was not on the sign. Oh, okay. Then Richie yeah. recommended it, but it was still a good recommendation. They're more scared of you than you are of them. Yes. Well, not in your case, but for the rest of us, certainly. Yeah. And so we did see one snake. But it wasn't even in the woods. I never saw it, or I would have packed the car and left right absolutely then. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't even at the woods. It was like the entrance to our condo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of vegetation there. And then we realized on the last day that had we walked, I don't know, 100 feet down the road, that there was a big, nice boardwalk that kind of went over the woods and there was showers. a very small amount of woods there to walk through. Yeah, like it was like narrow. We were walking like a football field's length through the woods. Had we walked maybe 100 feet down the road, we could have crossed over and it was nothing. Yeah. So we that was fun. We learned that lesson a little too late. So you're scared of a little snake. Yeah. But you're going to go it find a bear. It has fangs. Bears that have teeth and claws that will cut through your body. I don't know. I cannot explain the logic. I understand that it doesn't make sense. That there's there's it logically does not make sense. But I would take on a bear over a snake any day of the week. Listen, 
we went, we saw, we learned the other day on the internet webs, <clears throat> on the YouTube, that there are kangaroos in Australia that will try to drown your dog. Remember this? We watched this. Oh, yeah. This YouTube, I think we saw it on. Yeah. And this dude went out into the lake where this kangaroo had literally, and you know, kangaroos, like they muscly. Like, I don't know where they go to the gym at. I don't know if they have Planet Fitness in Australia for the kangaroos, mm -hmm. but like. It's LA Fitness they for got sure. Some, yeah. They got some muscles. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gym bros for sure. And this kangaroo had taken this dog, had drug it out in the middle of this lake, and literally had its like hooves wrapped around this dog's neck and was like pushing it yeah. underwater. And the dog, like, it's got his little head, like, as much as it's going, <gasps> trying to breathe. And dude, like, walks out into the middle of this, like, one-handed, mind you, because he's holding his phone in the other hand to record this, and just, like, knocks the crap out of this kangaroo. And this dog escaped. And, like, this kangaroo's, like, swinging at him, and dude just, like, beats the crap out of him. We were in hysterics. Yeah. So. So he loved his dog. He didn't want his dog to die. I would probably... No, there's no question. I would fight a kangaroo for Molly. So you do love her? Yeah, I just don't like her. <laughs> you just don't want her to die. Think about it like, like this. It. We've been in a fight, and you're mad at me, and you're not speaking to me. Mm -hmm. and, and you, like, are imagining yourself committing violent acts of rage against me. If somebody breaks into our house in the middle of you feeling this way about me, are you going to let them hurt me? No, but I don't feel violent rage about you either. That's it. That's really hard okay. example for true. me to I don't understand. Feel violent rage about Molly either. But if, yeah. if you're mad at me or you're just done with me or you're really annoyed by me, yeah, I don't want you to die. And I don't think it was sad if you died. Whereas you don't think it's sad when animals die. I don't know. I can see how Molly would be a fur baby. Before the baby came but along, she was to, kind of my baby. I don't want you to come kill my dog either. Like, I mean, I care about Let her. Let my dog die of natural causes, so I don't that's have to be fine. sad. I probably still wouldn't be sad. I'd just be more mad. You heathen. that I could take on a kangaroo. They're, they are pretty muscle bros. They're, they're gym bros. Yeah. But a bear? Because, like, what are they under all that fur? Probably nothing. Muscle? I bet they're not that. It's not like they're out there lifting branches, lifting <laughs> trees or anything out in the woods. They might be. You don't know. Mm. Well, if we don't come back with a season two, guys, it's because I found a, a bear and you've in the been mountains. mauled by a bear. It's because I've been mauled by, by a bear thinking that I could take it out. Heavens to Betsy. Please don't. Then I have to go date and find somebody else. Ugh. It felt like a dream I had once. Yeah. <laughs> I died from bear attack and you wouldn't marry somebody else. And I woke up mad at you. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So I saw something on social media recently. And at first... I thought it was stupid. And then I realized that I'm guilty of the same thing. Okay. This thing, it might have been a meme or something, but it said, I'm a college student. There is a female in my class, master's degree, by the way, what they're going for. So a female in my class who doesn't believe in dinosaurs. Not for any type of religious objection or scientific objection, but she says, like they just don't make sense. Big reptiles don't make sense to her. So in her mind, they're not real. Okay. And I thought, how stupid could a person be? Like We dig up the bones. We know they were there. Until I realized in a later conversation with you that I also have a hill that I'll die on that I know is ridiculous. <laughs> okay. I think expiration dates on food is a conspiracy <clears throat> theory to get you to buy more food. <laughs> what? With the exception of milk, because I think all milk smells like it's sour. Fresh out the cow, I think it smells sour. But sometimes it's chunky. It yeah. doesn't get chunky till past expiration. And some people buy it that way on purpose. Like buttermilk? Yeah. I don't like milk. Milk freaks me out. When somebody leaves milk out on the counter and they're like, oh, it's just a couple seconds or, you know, I left it out for five minutes. Okay, but what happens if you leave it out three times for five minutes? That's 15 minutes that you've left milk sitting out. So milk is out of the conversation because milk is... I will not drink milk, period. I milk will drink, is volatile is what I'm yes. understanding. I will drink almond milk. 
or soy milk. It's not really milk. I know. That's why I drink it. Also, I'm lactose intolerant, but that's not the point. <laughs> okay, so. I, I refuse to tolerate any milk ever. <laughs> anyway. But beyond that, uh-huh. I think that expiration dates are a myth. And I think that's funny coming from somebody who doesn't cook or do any of the rotation of our food or any of that. What about cheese that gets mold in the bag? If it's molded, yes, then don't eat it, obviously. I mean, use some common sense. But, like, if it's June 13th and the cheese says that it expires on June the 14th, you won't eat it. So are you saying that you're not disagreeing that food goes bad? You just no, think that absolutely. they make, obviously it goes bad. That they just make up... Yeah. Well, some of them aren't expiration dates. They're just best buy or freshest buy. And you live and die by them. Yeah, I'm not trying to die from the clap, from the food clap. No, I'm not. If I look at cheese. Salmonella, Ebola, E. coli. I mean, I just keep <laughs> Malaria, I don't know. E. coli. E. coli, Ebola, COVID. E. They're all in there. Yeah, I know what I said. I know what I said. You're just going to be indignant about it? Yeah. I was wrong, but I ain't going to change it. If cheese expires on the 13th and it's the 14th and the cheese is fine, I'm eating the cheese. That's ridiculous. No, because it gets in my head where like, ooh, something's wrong with it and then I won't like it and then it's grossing me out the whole time. It's like a psyche thing for me. I mean, obviously, if it's like cheese and it says it expired and like January and it's now like November, that's going to give me pause because that's common sense. But like, I mean, I think it's common sense if it's a couple days past. But that's you'll toss it out if it's a couple days before. That's not true. That is absolutely true. Now condiments, depending on the condiments, I won't always go like. Oh no! Expiration yeah. on those. Yeah, like the paprika that expired in 2014 that's still in our cabinet. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, ten year old paprika. It's fine. It's like we only use it once a year on the deviled eggs anyway. So, <laughs> which is why it's still there for 2014. I, I just, I feel like there are more important things to worry about out there than, like, you go and trying to bite a bear. Like, I don't care about cheese. That's a day out of date. Well, that's on you. You're also not the one that has to purchase the food or rotate the food in or out. You never have to worry about expiration dates because I take care of it for you. And I'm telling you that you take on too much worry worrying about some expiration dates. I'm not worried about it. I'm just... I saw a TikTok the other day where these girls were cleaning up their mother's house after she passed away. And in her cabinets, there was a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup that expired in 1994. Yeah, yeah, bruh. Now that I probably wouldn't eat. Yeah. Because that's common sense. Now here's what I can tell you. When people like do food prep and canning and like doomsday preppers and like all of that stuff and they get food and they like, mm, I think I would die. I, I literally think that, like, end of the world, and then I'm just going to go ahead and be like, peace, I'm going to heaven, y'all. Because, like, I appreciate that people can, and there are certain vegetables, obviously it's okay, but I've seen where people will can, like, all kinds of different stuff or prep it and have it. I can't even give you examples. I was watching a TikTok of it the other day, and I was like, I think I'd rather die than eat that. I think I would rather at the end of the world be like, no, I'm good, than have to eat whatever that is that's in that can or in that jar. Am I being dramatic? Is that ex- an extreme statement? Will I maybe have to eat my words, no pun intended, one day <laughs> if the world comes to an end? Yes, on all of that. But as it stands today, when there's a McDonald's down the road and I can get some fresh seafood from the store, uh-uh, we're good. But you're not getting seafood from McDonald's, right? <laughs> it's filet of fish season, guys. Did you just become Kermit? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, it's been fun, but I have got to go. Where are you going? I've got to head to the gym because I have got to start lifting some weights to prepare for my bear fight. Oh, gosh. About to be what? A bear fight? Thank you guys for joining us for season one of Love Lessons. (laughs) Unfortunately, there will not be a season two because Blair's going to get mauled. Probably. It's probably what's really going to happen. The only thing is if I can, um, I guess, get remarried in time for season two and, uh, you know, have a new co-host. She gets zero stars. 
Zero stars. Why are you mad? You're leaving me to get mauled by a bear. <sighs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning into season one. Let me ask this before we go. You're leaving to go get mauled by a bear. So yet again, the question I always ask, why don't you love me? <laughs> Maybe we'll find that out in season two. She won't be alive. It's been fun. See you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Love Lessons Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.